Okay, welcome to episode three of Project One Podcast uh, for the first time done in person. Um, podcast where we basically let everyone tell their story and talk about whatever really comes up. There's not really any uh, any rhyme or reason to it, but um, today with me I've got uh, Brent Gilmore. Mate, Brent, mate, big big couple of weeks for you, isn't it? It so, has been. It has been very, very busy. Yeah, second... Um, a new addition to the family. Yeah, so uh, yeah, baby uh, Phoenix was born. Yeah, coming up two weeks now. Yeah. So yeah, busy week, and then straight into knee surgery the next day. So that's that's yeah. crazy. I, um, Literally, not even twenty four hours later. So spoke to uh, my wife about that. Mm. She was like, "Could he? Could he put the surgery off?" But I was just <laughs> like, "We were sitting in the um in the birthing suite, and um and Jamie's mum looked at me and was like, he's still going with surgery tomorrow.'" I was like, "Yeah." As long as there's a decent network around, yeah, plenty, and, plenty of support. So yeah, that's right, right. And that's that's the main thing. Like yeah. you're not and waiting for surgery, as you can see, it's been well, one yeah, of those. Yeah, I was on a waiting list too, so like it was a a ninety day waiting list. So it was kind of like if you, I didn't want to say no, and then they turn around and go, okay, we're on the back of the list now, and then who knows when it's going to happen. But, yeah, exactly. So you get it done, and yeah. like it's not a not a long recovery. Either, no, well, so. it turned out really well. So the instead of it being the meniscus tear which I thought it was originally. So, long story short, it started off as an ACL and then it's, it went, turned into a meniscus. Well, it was a menis- meniscus originally and then it wasn't healing and then it took me like, I was like going to see physio for about seven or eight weeks and then it was still super, super painful. So, went to see another physio, went and got a scan because my physio that I originally see, she was on maternity leave. Um, yeah, went and got a scan. And they're like, you've torn your ACL, you've done your meniscus, blah, blah. So I'm like, here we go again. I've been through this before. It's just that an ACL recovery is very, very long. Um, and then, yeah, and then it was like, okay, well, your meniscus is torn, which will stitch back up. You'll be in a brace for six weeks and happy days. And then I woke up out of surgery with no brace. And then they're like, oh, it's not torn. And you just gave it, gave your clean up. So I walked into physio the Tuesday after and like this is what we call a physio's dream like you come out with an AC you're thinking an ACL and then you think it's a meniscus and then all you get is a clean up so that's awesome so, yeah, so yeah. do you feel how do you feel now awesome eh? it's been... still still a bit of swelling yeah. um like in the top of my kneecap and stuff but uh, I started doing deadlifts and squats and stuff again at the gym so yeah, like right. just light stuff um and then I see physio again today so once the stitches and stuff come out and my wounds are healed, these are pretty much going all clear to go back to jiu-jitsu. So oh, that's excellent. I'm just stinging to get back into that. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we had our... Um, mate, I'll tell you, I'm a bit banged up from... Like, <laughs> for, for those who don't yeah. know, I know Brent from uh, Team, Ana, Team Anaconda mm. Jiu-Jitsu. And um, yeah, I took his place in uh, our quintet competition. Mm. Um, changed teams, mate. Yeah. So I've got to thank you. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, our, out our team yeah. won. We... Um, some expert coaching from you on the sides. Yeah. Uh, I was watching. I was watching videos back, and all you can hear is me just screaming at everyone. <laughs> you were awesome, though, man. I'll I be honest. It. There was a yeah, couple of times it. where I'm oh, bloody hell under camp, mm. which is no no Mate, fun place to be. Oh, he's a heavy, heavy and, boy. And um, the sweep, there was one of the sweeps. Yeah, I, was I think. I was I, a, and I, you're like, there it is, and I could, I just couldn't get to his leg to get. Is it the electric chair one? Yeah. yeah. You had the lockdown, and then I was saying to unhook the leg, and then you couldn't get it, and then I was like, bridge up on your shoulder, and then yeah. you kind of got it. And I think you ran out of time at the end. Well, yeah, he ended up but, just smashing me with the guillotine. Mate, was, he's, was, he's, a, he's a he's a he's a handful. He's mate, a he's handful. a handful. Like, I'm pretty explosive as it is, and like I'm used to explosive guys, but. He's um, oh, he's a handful. And yeah. Half. Well, mate, I was I was so happy with myself in in mm. previous weeks. I've been rolling with him, and I've, mm. he's usually like hard to handle. But towards mm. the end of the round, I've I've been able to pull something. That's off. the thing with like big guys like that. Like, yeah. it's like that's the kind of thing that I'm lucky with. Um, like having a lot of running background and and footy and all that. I've got a good gas tank, and that's the only thing that saves me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So the first time we do any kind of competition, and mm. he bloody nails me. Off, yeah. So it's just like, and then like. I give everyone a nice little scare with my. Yeah. <laughs> I felt. I actually felt yeah. more. I felt worse with him than anyone else because yeah. he was like on me for ages. Are you all right? Are you all yeah. right? He was just so. He's nice. nice he's, he's yeah. He's, yeah. An, he's an awesome guy. Like he um he's a personal trainer at the at Active Fitness now, and I seen him in there the other day, and he's yeah he's a legend. So. Yeah, yeah. I have to get him yeah. on. He's, I'm sure he's got some stories. As yeah. Well. well, he's um. Yeah, he's like he's a he's a wedding singer, and he yeah. um he's been through the ringer a bit lately. Like obviously losing his job with COVID in Sydney and stuff, and then obviously all his wedding stuff has fallen out because of COVID as well. And then um yeah, 
bounce back on his feet now. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure he will. Mm. I'd make actually, I reckon he'd be he'd be good to have on something like this. But yeah, let's, definitely. Let's go back to injury because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's something that we 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 tend to deal with. Yeah. You've had I've you've had, had a bit I've, of a, you've I've had, had a run, haven't you? Yeah. You've um, but you've been doing like contact sports mm. your whole life. Yeah. Um, take us take us through your take us through your sport and, uh, and uh, how much it's bashed yeah, you up. So um, <laughs> the first. The first major injury I had was about under 12s. First game of footy, my dad had never watched me play. And I broke my leg off the first tackle of the kickoff. So we uh, caught like the, we kicked off to them. I sprinted out of the line and the biggest dude on the field. I was like, oh, here we go. I'll take him. And then he just steamrolled me. And all his weight went straight over. So that was, um, that was the start of the injury career. <laughs> and you weren't... Um I wasn't a little fella. I was, yeah, you mm. weren't little, but you mm. were never like a like you've um you bulked up mm. in in more recent times. Yeah, but even yeah. when I first met mm. you, you were like a lot kind of more a bit more slimline. I'll yeah, say. yeah. It's, well, when, once I once I was starting, I was kind of kind of stacked on the beef for a little while after I did my ACL, and then um and then you were, it was kind of in that period where you were in and out of jujitsu, and then um. Once I started running and I was like, I did a marathon and stuff. Um, yeah, it just, it falls off. It's hard to keep weight on when you're running that much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, marathons, man. Like, mm. a, again, you, you don't have the typical build of a no. marathon runner. No. What made you go, you know what, I'm, I'm running a marathon. So, you did 40, 42? 42.2 Ks, so, yeah. So, you did the full marathon. Yeah. What what made you decide that was the way to so go? So, one of my mates, uh, Mitch, like from the gym, he, um, he was like my personal trainer. And me and him used to train together all the time. He was doing a, so he lost one of his mates as well uh, to suicide when he was younger. And he was doing a marathon in every state to raise some money for um, Beyond Blue. It come to the New South Wales one. And then I'd been doing a couple of runs with him here and there. And I was just like, yeah, I'd done a few 5Ks and a couple of 10Ks and whatnot and just ignorance. And I was like, yeah, why not? I'll do it. <laughs> Biggest regret. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then um, I was like, yeah, why not? I'll give it a crack. Like, um, And then once you... You probably know as well, like running, like just you get addicted to that feeling of how you feel afterwards. Yeah, no, like I, I've, I, I'll tell you, I don't. You I, don't? I, I can't, do. I, I can't it. handle it. Mm. And, and I hear that all the mm. time. That whole runner's high. And so I that's keep... what um, that's, I've got a tattoo on my arm. That's what the, that's the runner's high chemical. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much how I got into it. And I want to do another one, but as I'm the same, I'm in the same spot now. I'm just like I just could not be bothered getting back into it. <laughs> Look, I. Uh, any any kind of training where you kind mm. of exhaust yourself, mm. I do. Like, I get that feeling, yeah, yeah. but I don't get. I think that that's what specific it is. Specific one from a running. Like, yeah, it's got to be like. Um, I think from like the scientific point of view, it's anything over like. I think it's like two hours of aerobic training or something put you in that spot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's, a t it's. I think it's more of a mental thing that I like. I like put myself in that uncomfortable, deep zone. Do you ever get up to get to a point where you're like, you know, you're feeling a bit lazy and you look at your arm and you're like, oh, come on. It's like a constant Sometimes, reminder yeah. that you've got to get some shit done. I did it. And like that, I actually had that thought probably six months ago. And then I was like, I'm going to get back and run. And I was like looking at it. I'm like, stop being lazy. <laughs> I went for like a 2K run and I come back and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm unfit. And that is something you lose real quick in running, so isn't fast, it? Like, because yeah. when the, during during all the COVID mm. lockdowns, that was mm. a, with no jujitsu. I was yeah. just all running, so I was doing five k every mm. couple of days, yeah. and then pushing out to ten. And like, mm. I've, I've never been a runner, so I but I been or, but, get, but getting into it because <laughs> yeah. it's, you needed something. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, and then it's funny then. You go and do a few months later. Mm. It's been, but it's a different kind of fitness. Oh, Every, it's, it's that's crazy. what I've noticed, man. The different kind of training you do. They're all completely different types of fitness. Like going yeah. for a five k run, mm. and then doing you know five rounds of jujitsu yeah, is a completely enough, yeah. different world. It's the same. In, it. mm. It's the same in striking yeah. and boxing as well. Again, yeah. it's just a completely different gas yeah. tank. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, that's um yeah. I think it's just more of the mental thing, and that's what I love about jujitsu. It's such a when you're in that in like a seven minute round and you're on minute five and you've got Campbell on top of you or Chris Lillier on top of you and you just you, all you want to do is just quit that's <laughs> like the I suppose that's the, the prime zone that I like living in so. yeah it's good it mm. is good that's yeah. um, that's what I love about Jiu Jitsu too yeah. is that you know it's not just training mm. you, like you don't have a choice to push yourself because if you don't no. push yourself there you're getting you get choked yeah. or you're getting like yeah. you literally it's like a like I think um, Rogan talks about what's mm. that one of the, and we talk about it all the time the idea that it's one of the only sports like especially martial arts yeah, you sports can go 100%, that you can just go hundred yeah. percent and just 
it's you know that addictive mm. and like the consequences are just as, mm. as real. Well, I was You're talking to I was talking to Jamie. Um, there was a thing on it's like a crime show the other night on TV, and these um this guy was getting ha- harassed by um his brother-in-law or something. His brother-in-law had killed his brother, and he was um on the run from him. So they signed up to jiu-jitsu, him and his wife, mate. And for like two years, they were just like constantly looking over their shoulder and stuff. And they'd been training jiu-jitsu that whole time. Anyway, the time came, he rocked up and he come running at him. And the guy was probably about my size. And there was a guy a bit smaller than you, double-legged him, took him down, choked him out. And like the guy was the most wanted guy in the world, uh, in Australia, sorry, at some point. And took him down and choked him out. And like, and then I was like, I looked at Jamie. I was like, this is why everyone needs to know jiu-jitsu. Because it's situations like this. And like, it's not also, it's like, it's a fun sport. But at the end of the day, it's, it can be life and death. Well, that's what I think about it. I, like, can I talk, I had this conversation Mm. when it comes to gi and no gi. Mm. Um, and you know this whole idea of a street fight. I mean, I'm, Mm. I'm almost forty. I'm never, I'm never getting in a street fight again. But there's something about knowing that your muscle memory is there to react mm. if something ever happens yeah. to you or anyone around yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That you can actually do something yeah. about it. Mm. And like, yeah, but um, yeah, like I, I laugh a bit. We laugh about the gay thing, but like today, you're wearing <laughs> like a hoodie. Yeah. Like, tell me, there's not plenty of chokes. Like, oh, especially like a baggy one. That's like, what I mean, I mean, I'm in trouble with. Like, like, if, if no like, one knows anything, yeah. Of, um, there's plenty of lapels, so mm. to speak. We're like, seeing like guys in suits and stuff. Like the first thing they do is grab the tie and like wrap around their neck. Like, yeah. Oh mm. well, so, mate, yeah. a, a, a suit's just like a fancy gi, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> probably rip a little it's got bit easier. Lapels but, yeah, and exactly, all. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, a, it's a it's a prime scenario for a jiu-jitsu person. So yeah, like we we've like been. How long have you been training now? It's been. I think about four and a bit years. Yeah, so right. I think we were talking about in the in the group chat the other day. I think it was. Um, I think it was about four and a half, maybe coming up to five, maybe next year. Yeah, and you've been like, other than like a bit of time off for yeah. injury recently, yeah. you've been right back in recently. You've been yeah. So I stopped for a little more. bit, um, in between, um, for probably about three or four months, and then um, that was just like footy. I hurt my ankle at footy. Back to the injury soon. Um, yeah, oh, mate. <laughs> back to the want, can... back to the footy. Um, then I was training. Like, obviously, I'm training during the week, and then I was coaching Charlotte as well for she's playing rugby. So then I was coaching them. And so that was Thursday night. And then Tuesday night, I would have that. And then um, trying to get fit. And then I was just like, it. and then obviously, after we lost Tori, I kind of lost heaps of motivation with that. Yeah. Um, and I went through just a bit of a low period. Didn't want to train. Obviously, hit, hit me hard with losing T. And then, like, that's just opening the wound, going in there every week. Like, and so yeah it was like probably four months where i didn't train just focus on footy and try to focus on myself yeah and then yeah and once once i got back into it i haven't really stopped so yeah, injury, so, which which i'm so, yeah definitely gonna definitely gonna bring up tori mm. tori um tori's a our old mma mm. coach and a, basically a scientist <laughs> when it came to grappling yep. um we lost him um lost in the suicide and it's why we talk about you know mental health has mm. been such a big deal for well, most of our club especially but even yeah it's mate it's it's just one of those shattering things that even years later now mm. it still affects you and i know mm. it, it put the club through all sorts mm. like because you know a couple of people couldn't go anymore mm. like there's yourself and there's a couple yeah. more that um kind of t- I, I almost went the other way i mm. almost kind of like well, that's what turned me back around to go back into it. I sat, there, I was kind of sitting there, and I was like, the last thing he would want me to do is sit here and dwindle and everything, and and like not pick myself up and go. And it was probably the hardest thing is he was one of those guys that you wouldn't know. He was like the he was the most no happy. One had, no one had a clue. Mm. And he was like probably like you looked at him and he was like the strongest, the strongest, meanest looking dude you've ever seen ever. And yeah, no one had a clue. And then obviously that's obviously what. We need to break. We need to break that stigma of people trying to be the big tough guy. And like, yeah, like even me, like it's hard for me to say that I was struggling with going through all that. Like, and me not training, and then obviously like injuries. Like, I tore my ACL. I lost my job. I just had a baby. So like, I'm, like I've been in in dark holes, and I like I know you struggle with some stuff as well. It's hard for blokes to sit there and say, yeah, no, I've been struggling. 
and it's you're just lucky that you have a good family support and like the boys from Jiu Jitsu, like I know that I could call any of them boys up any time of the night and they'd answer the phone and that was the that's the hardest thing that we set with Tori was because he knows that we were all there and we were all so close to him that it still wasn't enough. Yeah, and that's like it's one of those things that we do really need to treat as mm. as an illness. Yeah, for sure. Like, for sure. Literally, it's something that mm. it's like a cancer that mm. unfortunately one day got the better of you. Yeah. And like any illness can, mm. like, and it it sucks, and it's just mm. such a like it was so much, and the world is kind of so much poorer mm. for him not being hundred percent. Like our the way our jujitsu changed from the years that he was in there to if he never came along our jiu-jitsu wouldn't be anywhere the way it is now. Even for like Chris O, like, like our coach, he would say the same thing. Like the way that Tori had molded his training and the way that he he trained and the the level of physicality that he trained at. Like I used to hate rolling him because it would just hurt so bad. Yes. Like, I, like I would avoid hurt, him. Didn't he? I would avoid him at all costs. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like I'm not even kidding. I'm, to this day, I have never tapped him ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, that's that's like, a given for me. Yeah, but. and I was like, you'd roll with him, and I'm like, I thought my jiu-jitsu was going good. <laughs> Obviously not, mate. I remember like two two big moments. I remember with 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 Tori was mm. um one when we had um basically a winner stays in thing, mm. and he went through eight oh, yeah. or nine guys yeah. twice. Like oh. he just like tap you, tap you, tap mm. you, and I think he finally got done on like his 16th roll yeah, or, set or something he, like that, dead. and he's just <laughs> murdering yeah. everyone, yeah. we're just like, how, how do you do this, and the other one for me was when he was um, coaching MMA, yeah. and he's got me got me against the wall, and he's holding my hand, and he's just mm. like, okay, now you've got yeah, to get, yeah, up, get up, punching yeah. me in the face, and he's just now you've got up. to get yeah. up, and I'm just like, mm. I, I can't do shit, yeah, and he's just like, no, nah, you've got to get up, you've got to get up, and just yeah. find a way, but it was like, he was just, he was an excellent coach as well. I know, like, yeah, he was, um, yeah, the way he, he struggled to explain things sometimes, but like, um, yeah, he, he would just show you, like this, it was all, it was all just watch the technique, and he'll, he'll do it to you, and then you're like, okay, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. And oh, yeah. geez, how much mm. does that hurt? Because yep. um, he, like I said, he used to make the smallest things hurt. Mm. Like he'd grab your foot. Yeah. Like and just the control that he would have on you. Yeah. So mm. it's kind of the the ultimate of um, misdirection because mm. you're all you're worried about someone you paying your foot all of a sudden your arms being ripped. Yeah, off well, that was the thing with him. Like he would take so much focus away from what he was trying to do to you and put pain and put a pressure somewhere else so that you would hand him something else and you're like jesus why did i do that but if you didn't do that you were like tap into like pressure yeah yeah jeez we sound like a bunch of saddest don't we all like, yeah <laughs> it's like oh it's so good and yeah. he's beating us yeah like, <laughs> do jujitsu <laughs> yeah that's right yeah, oh, it's, so. it's funny though it's the high you get off but it's great oh um, that's awesome how did mate how did you come to start jujitsu in the first place so me and so from I start I was doing karate as a kid. Uh, so my dad was a mum and dad when I was younger. They were both black belts in karate, and um, then as time went on, they they had their own dojo back in the day. Um, I'm pretty sure. And then they as it went went by, um, we started up again, and dad started back with the brown belt and started again. And then they were kind of like, oh, I've got this like wrestling stuff we can do. And then I remember like distinctively constantly asking can we do it can we do it and they're like oh yeah yeah we'll get we'll get to it we'll get to it and then because they were so striking based they were just like oh they kind of just got pushed to the side and i kept asking i kept asking and it never happened and then i was only thinking about it the other day and i was like it was obviously just meant to be that i was meant to do it and then um so then me and tim uh, he just messaged me one day and he's like oh, i've been thinking about doing jiu-jitsu and we looked up the places around the coast and stuff and then um we've seen that it was one in charm even and we just messaged chris and then we'd only just moved over to the to Lyon um like the week before and then yeah so we just something come in and had a look and never turned back so did you start at the um north wild yeah gym? yeah okay. so it was probably the, i think they'd been in there for probably they were coming up to their first full week in the gym so we started the the week after so they were on week two of the of the brand spanker gym so so like on that what what are your memories of kind of early classes then because, I mean, it, obviously, we had a mm. bunch of guys around that time that all seemed to get addicted to it. Mm. Well, it was it were all just white belts. Yeah. Like, it was like it was only a Chris really o, yeah. Group, really good group. Really good group. And then uh, I remember walking out um, after probably the second session and Chris literally looked at me. He's like, don't you don't you not come back? Like, he said to me, like, you, you're in here now. Like, you, like stick with it. And, um, 
yeah, and it's just from the, I think the going in and realizing how far behind you were compared to people that are already in there. There was only like Chris O that was the, the high level guy, like a coach. Um, but just not knowing anything, like, and you're like, okay, well, you can get this on me so easy, you know, I don't know, like, I've got nothing. Like, and then I think that then that just triggers someone to, like, okay, I need to chase something now. I need to chase that, like, that perfection. Mm. And I need to keep chasing, like, the, the feeling of, like, succeeding and progressing. Yeah, progressing is mm. massive, isn't it? But, like, mm. I remember my, one of my first ever roles, like, mm. my, this is literally 10, mm. 11 years mm. ago now. I rolled with a um a guy out of Canberra, mm. um a blue belt. He was the coach at mm. the time. That's I think at the time there was eight black belts in Australia. Or yeah, something. You know, yeah, back in the day, something ridiculous. Yeah, and like, now, so yeah. you've got blue belts running, mm. you know, yeah. academies mm. and stuff. And he's he's gone on and mm. become awesome. That guy, but he mm. was a blue belt, and I rolled with him for five minutes, and I swear he tapped me twenty mm. times in yeah. five minutes, mm. and I was just like. I, I thought I could wrestle. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I thought I, tutor, yeah. I thought I thought I could do something. Yeah. This guy's smaller than me mm. and he's just smoking me in yeah. everything and I've just gone, This is this is something mm. I've got I've got to learn some more For of. Sure. And it was amazing. But mm. fast forward now, mm. we got a bunch of new white belts at it's Team Anaconda. Oh, yeah. So it's it's awesome. Like it's like I was saying to the guys the other day, like I've been me and Jake um Wright have been pretty close since he's come in. And um, like even like I showed him that, well, Chris has been going through it as well, but he was struggling a bit with the like his triangles and whatnot. And I was like, just switch to the armbar and whatever. And then he got three of them on, on Monday night, and I was like, that's heaps good. So it's it's yeah. I'll, even what Toby was saying after the match, like he said, he once he finished um, the quintet, holding up his his uh, first place medal, and he's like, it's um, it's awesome to see how everyone's progressing and then Patty same thing was saying if we were all the level that you were at as white belts like we'd be we ki- would be killers yeah and so what do you what do you because like we all came in as white belts so mm. like I reckon that's a, a big part of it the fact Massive. that the fact that now there's a nice spread of yeah a good, belts yeah and people mm. willing to help mm. teach yeah it's bringing up the level of the whole gym 100 and then like um yeah, just the way that all the yeah, like all us blue belts are progressing, and then obviously Toby coming back in, and then when we had um, James in there for a while, um, like he came, David. yeah, I know he yeah he was so good, wasn't mm. he? It was like great to have yeah. around. So yeah, but then it just like um, yeah, it's just a testament to Chris's coaching, I suppose. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean it's um, a lot of gyms are turning to that more submission based stuff and they're turning into all the leg locks and as what chris was saying the other day like it's it's all good and well if you're focusing on submission only stuff but we're a club that does everything and that's obviously a testament to how good our wide range of skills are um yeah and i think it's just the fact that so many guys have been sticking to it for so long and we're such a good knit group and we just want to go out there and murder each other every night that's all right that's all right it's like oh mate who needs uh like who needs the um the happy hour drinks when you can just go and smash yeah, each other instead yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah, it's, um, no, you get the same buzz out of it when well, you finish I, um, I always laugh because as you're a kid you're always wrestling with your mates yeah I know and you mm. love it mm. and some of us just never grow out of it yeah I know like, that's, yeah, that's a, yeah that, I was it's the same thing that's what I thought as well I was like I thought I'm pretty I'm pretty handy wrestling and stuff and then you walk in there and you just get thrown around exactly mm. exactly so I thought I was a good like stand up wrestler until I wrestled Tori and then he just put me in my head every week so yeah yeah humbling absolutely mm. absolutely that's yeah. a that's the biggest thing about like it obviously a lot of gyms have like leave your ego at the door and stuff and if you have an ego then it doesn't last very long that's it because you um yeah. you, you get humbled very very fast it's and cool. a lot of guys don't last you'll see guys come and go like people will come in the gym and do a trial and then like um i, mean, we, I don't know if you remember we we're at we we're at north long there's guys like we we're long hair and we we're doing strike and stuff he used to go super hard all the time yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and then like, it didn't last too long no, yeah. and that's it. These guys are coming with the ego and they're coming in to prove that they can already fight. Yeah. The point is, you're coming in to show... Because you can't. Yeah. Like, yeah, you learn on it. a real you level, learn, yeah. like, you might be able to handle yourself against, like... An untrained person. An untrained <laughs> person. Well, yeah, yeah. Some, someone else. But as soon as mm. you get in with someone who actually knows a little bit about what they're doing, it's yeah. it's a game changer. Yeah. I always laugh with... I was talk, like, talking to, to Bolsey mm. about... Um, uh, about... 
how sometimes, because you know what he's like when he rolls mm. with you, he's, he lets stuff go all yeah. the time. He just yeah. gets to the position, lets it go, moves. Yeah. And you don't, and sometimes you never knew you were even in danger. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but he goes, sometimes the ego is kicking a little bit. You've yeah. got to turn it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's got yeah. to turn it up. Oh, so, yeah, there's always, there's always a little bit of ego in there. And like sometimes, like even like me and Lilia will roll with each other and like sometimes it just gets real heated and like you're just like, you're pushing it and then we're both trying to grab stuff and then we'll fit. But you finish roll when you get up and like, just give each other a hug and like, like how good is that? Jeez, like, there's some good matchups in our gym at the oh, moment too. Man. Like I, oh mate, I, I was on the wrong end of that quintet. I had to take on <laughs> Campbell and then Duck. Mm. And I'm just like, man, I need to put on some size. Nah. I'm like, I'm, I'm just too too small against some of these yeah. blokes. But um, yeah, but yeah, the, uh, there's no one in that group that like all the, all your blue belts, mm. all, most of these are giants. Yeah, um, that's like we used to call it the... Um, over tw- over 120 kilo club for a while. Like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like me, Mick Smith, and Lilia, and when we were at the old gym, and then Tori. Like was, none of us were under under 100 kilos. So, yeah, mate. Look, I, I, I appreciate this place so much because yeah. it's your therapy, it's your yeah. social, mm. it's your it's a bit of everything, mm. and like just a bunch of gr- a bunch of guys all you know trying to help each mm. other get better. And it's uh, turned, like come like obviously starting from how it was before. Like you're coming into a bunch of guys that don't know each other, and then now we're all family. Like everyone, everyone loves everyone. That's you know, it. Everyone will do anything for. And anyone. that's what I'm. That's what I'm noticing about this new group. They've, a lot of this new group have mm. really fit into that. Um, to that family atmosphere. For sure. That's what. Yeah. Like. And like. I didn't know. Um. I didn't know Jake from a bar set before that, and now um, me and him train at the gym together, and like we've got mutual friends. Um. Like his best mate. Like he used to live across the road from me, but. Like now, yeah, we train train together and talk to each other all the time, and it's um yeah, it's good to it's good to have a good core group of people and, and people just slot straight into it. Well, that's the idea, and I think because Chris has been building this thing up. Like yeah. I, I walked in seven years ago, mm. and like when I moved up here from mm. Sydney, mm. and um, I, I I had no idea. Like I thought didn't i thought chris could have been in business for five six years yeah, for all yeah, I know, know, but yeah. literally he'd mm. been opened a few months before mm. i'd come in mm. and um so i've done that and there's no one there and it's, mm. it's hard to build something off the ground yeah, like that yeah like you so you think like some nights when we're at north Wong, like even you would have been the same at charm even like even less it was only like you have one or two people in there yeah. some nights like yeah and there was hardly anyone and now like you'd be lucky to walk into our gym now and then not be 15 people there well thursday was a quiet one mm. um because it's a gay. Yeah, well, well oh, mate, I, uh, master no gay coach over here. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting my Thursday yeah, so, night coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you, you watch the difference between Ben and I's coach. Mm. Ben's got all this fancy stuff going on. Mm. I'm just all basics. I'm like, all right, let's just sync That's up. That's all right. I love basics. Yeah, so do I. I, I it's my favorite. It's fundamentals. I, yeah. I love it because yeah. I most of the stuff it's that's what you to go set back to yeah that stuff up yeah. those basic chokes yeah. and yeah. improve them that's mm. what we've, that's what I know. tell all the new fellows like it's all good and well and watching YouTube videos and watching like high level fancy stuff like Gordon Ryan doing and Craig Jones doing leg entries and all this fancy Baron Bolo stuff but at the end of the day it's all about control and position there's no point in going for something like Chris says it the same thing it's like there's no point in going for some wild thing if you're going to lose a position yeah so it always comes back to those fundamental things and it's like you're always going to end up in guard you're always going to end up inside control or you're always going to end up in mount yep and it's about getting back there in the most efficient way yep so okay. the basics as we we're saying mm-hmm. they're, they're so important and like yeah. it's funny what you'll do you'll because you'll kind of learn some stuff when you first start you're like mm. oh i know that yeah and then you'll learn a detail mm years later mm. that all of a sudden makes that from a an okay submission mm. to something that's murdering people yeah that yeah you get all the time and um yeah that's it yeah you get you touch on things and then as time goes by you go back over it again like well that's the same thing we do in class we'll go back over it what a year later and you're like oh i forgot about that yeah it's yeah. i mean my memory's as good as a goldfish do <laughs> so like i i've some of the that's they're the people I'm jealous of mm. the people who just learn at once like I've got like Pat who just oh yeah he just he hears it and now it's in his arsenal mm. you and know the, yeah and then he catches with you ten times in the yeah, next yeah, yeah, two yeah. weeks <laughs> just doesn't yeah he's mate he's a bloke who's come along mm. a long way um, yeah crazy he's uh, he's a handful oh mate everyone's a handful he's, he, he's just so long and so strong yeah like, yeah he's, like, he's, he's the perfect like if he had another. I reckon five or ten kilos on him. Like, uh, there's no no one stopping him. Like, 
Yeah, it's uh, he's heavy as it is now. That's like. what I. That's what I yeah. mean. You know, from from you to say you can say that I'm. Gonna, I can't handle him oh, this yeah, way. Yeah, I'm, yeah. If there's any, if he's got any, like even that, I can barely struggle to handle him now. <laughs> even that Smithy as well. He's long. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, mate. I, Nick Smith. He's he's been one of my favourite training partners Reason forever. Mm. Like, he's. He's the bloke who will like he's just having fun with it hmm. at the moment. He yeah. like for a long time like oh, he was. No, look, I won't say going because he was never going hard. Like yeah. he was always, but he was always training and he'd, yeah, yeah, he'd smash you. Hmm. And like, but he's changing his game up hmm. now and like playing. I think that's why me and him attract to each other a lot. So like every time we'll come in the gym, they like grab a partner. Me and him just look at each other and smile because like we'll draw techniques and stuff, but it's always like we're always mucking around and having fun and always like trying new stuff on each other and like figuring it all out and um yeah, he's a he's a good bloke to um to hang around it? all the time yeah it's, yeah it's so good and, like mm. and i love that idea of, like you'll roll with someone and then they'll show you exactly what they tapped you with and how you should mm. probably yeah and how you should it, defend yeah. it yeah like i basically um, giving away all your own secrets yeah i'm the same i'm the same thing with like all the all the young fellas like J- like especially jakey with his um he's like he's off his um, back game like his guard like you're saying like he got three arm bar sub- inverted arm bar submissions and he's locking up triangles left right and centre and dealing with Bobby for so long like I've learnt a good triangle defence because I've been caught in it that many times yeah and as soon as like he caught me in it and it, I, I caught out of it straight away and he's like I thought I had that locked up super tight like and I'm like you did but like here's how I got out of it this is what I did and um, this is the defence to it so now if someone else does that defense on you, you know what's coming. Yeah. And you can stop it. And then um and then he just starts murdering everyone with it. <laughs> so good. So, and he mate, yeah, I'd so we can't you brought up Bobby. Mm. Like uh, Bobby was just a, a kid who yeah. came from a bit of a striking background mm. and mm. then just got obsessed with jiu jitsu yeah. and just is insane so now. He's like on another he's level. Go, you know, going on these like these inversion pay-per-view things yeah, and, yeah, and killing yeah. it yeah. subversion sorry yeah. not inversion mm. it's um yeah like and it's just I'm, I'm spewing he's not around more like he was as know, much as it sucks to roll him because it hurts so bad it does cause and um yeah it's you need like that's the high level guys like that that come in and it just is a testament to the amount of training that he's put in and the people he's been training with like he went to Melbourne for a little while and obviously COVID stopped that um but then he's training with Isaac all the time and he's like killing everyone in Australia. He's like obviously Craig's in Australia at the moment, but he's on his way up there to um, start contending with the top guys. And then like yeah, training with Lachlan all the time. And then he's with um, South West Sydney Martial Arts, whatever it is. And um, with yeah, Luke Penrith, yeah. yeah, he's training with Luke Martin. Yeah, and uh, yeah, insane. And uh, yeah. mate, the the amount of travel because he's still living up here. Yeah, traveling yeah. out to Penrith every yeah. day. That's yeah. that's insanity. Oh, that's obsession. Is obsession, what that yeah. is. Is yeah. And, mate, is a reason he's so good. So mm. I, yeah. I hadn't rolled with him for a while because when obviously you had the COVID break and everything. And then once um, it kind of s- slowed down, you could have a couple of people at your house and stuff. I went over there and he had some mats in his garage. And we did like a bit of work. We were watching like Craig Jones' DVD and stuff and doing some um, leg locks and whatnot. And then um, I rolled with him afterwards. And he tapped me like eight times in like the space of like 10 minutes. And I was just like, holy shit, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Look, I... I was taking. We had him. He turned up for a, a training session one night. And we were playing like just a past the mm. guard game. Yeah, I think. And I, that one, yeah. I somehow passed his guard. Like yeah, I, I remember, think he, I remember he done that, through yeah. a point. And I was taking the piss. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, I gee, that, like yeah. treating it like it was the biggest victory <laughs> yeah, ever. It is, and it kind of was. Yeah. But um, then I was talking about it. The other, like he mm. said, oh, he was training one of the young blokes, and he's like, you should never get your guard passed. Yeah. Because there's no excuse for it. Yeah. And that's the attitude. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, never. No, you should never get it done. I'm like, I said, oh man, I remember. And I was like, and I was staring. Him up, he's like, All right, let's have a roll. And yeah. this is a mistake, yeah. and there, uh, sure enough, eight ankle locks later, yeah. in three minutes, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but he, like as I was saying before, he's one of those guys that focuses solely on submission stuff. He done like a wrestling comp the other day. I commented on his thing, and he got taken down pretty. I saw the big take, down. yeah. It was that, um, and, yeah, um, I, I, I posted something funny, you know, it was like, uh, yeah, more, um, more, more stand up, less getting taken down or something, just being a smart ass. Yeah, and, um, we, we give him a bunch of stick, but he's he's obviously so good that he, yeah, and he knows it too. Yeah, like he's, yeah. he's we've seen like point. he rolled with um the crazy Joe guy, I think it was from um 
one of the gyms in Sydney and he's a purple belt and apparently there was a lot of talk around him saying how good he was and Bobby submitted him within like two minutes. Yeah, the fact that Bobby's wearing a blue belt still is ridiculous. Oh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's he, ridiculous. He's, yeah, but like... Honestly, whoever is coaching him, it, I reckon... It's they, cause, I think it's because he bounces between gyms so it's much. It's true, a but cre- he's cre- been... Cre- a creonch if you listen to this, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, well, we'll talk to enough about our training yeah. partners. So let's, get, oh, let's, let's get back to... Um, we'll get back to the injuries. We'll get back to the injuries. So, yeah. Broken leg at um, at like 13, 12 or 13. Then um, I was pretty good. I broke my hand a couple of times, like getting in fights and stuff, as you do as a young'un. Um, other than that, I was pretty good until I tried to come back. Oh, then, sorry, I did my ACL. So I hadn't played footy in oh, nearly five years. So like moved to Sydney for work, started my mechanic apprenticeship in Sydney. And I was like, you know what, I'll get back into footy. Got back into footy, first training session back after Christmas in preseason playing touch footy in the warm-up, tore my ACL, and then, um, yeah, so after that, lost my job after that, as, so as I was getting surgery, so I had to wait 12 months for the surgery, because I was on the public list, in that meantime, me and Jamie had fallen pregnant with our first child, and then it come to my surgery, they wouldn't let me back in between, because like, you can't pass a medical, because you're not strong enough and stuff. Which I was like, by the end of it, like I was pretty good. Like I'd, I could have worked and they were just kind of being assholes about it. And then um, came back. So I had the surgery. So I had the baby first, then had the surgery about a month later. And then after surgery, so I had six weeks off after that. Then I got an infection in the wound because my body rejected my internal stitches. And then I just woke up one day and there was like my, this big hole in my leg. Ugh. Went to, went to um, the hospital, so I spent five days in the IV after that. And then, so when I did my ACL again, I'm like, PTSD, like, <laughs> Mate, <laughs> here we go again. I feel like such a, such a, such a little wuss when it comes <laughs> to the stories I hear. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm clutching at my mm. ribs and it's just soft tissue damage. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, oh, I'm so much pain. And then mm. you've like gone through five mm. days on an IV. Jeez. Yeah, so they nearly, I nearly had to go back in and have surgery again to clean it out. They said, if we're going to dose you high on antibiotics, if that doesn't work, then we have to go to surgery again tomorrow because we, if it gets in the graft, it gets in your bone, it gets in your blood, and then you die. So that's pretty much how blunt they put it. Yeah, right. And they said, we'll wake up in the morning and then we'll decide whether or not to go for surgery. I didn't end up having to have it. But how does that go when they tell you that, like it's that serious? How, yeah, does, so I've got how a, does your mind tick well, over I've got then? An, I've got a newborn at home Absolutely. that's like a month old. So Jamie's looking after by, by herself and then I'm sitting in hospital and they're telling me that like it could be in my bone graft and I might have to have a section of my bone cut out if that's the case. Then I have to have ACL surgery again to replace the graft because it's infected. Then if that's the worst case, if it's in your blood, you're in real trouble and you could die. So they're like, so I'm sitting there like panicking, like, geez, like that's that's a heavy thing. And there. How, how do you handle that? How I don't do know. You, like, there's, there's what's no way, what's um, your coping strategy in that stage? Because we're talking know. about mental mm. illness and all that kind of mm. stuff. But literally, sometimes life just throws some hammers yeah, at you. Yeah. And um, you know, it's hard to do. You, you kind of just got to take it. And that's us going through all that stuff now, like doing money this time. It is what it is. But back then obviously it's like shit like i can't work i can't do this i can't lucky i was still living at home because after that i came back to work after all that happened so chart was probably three or four months old got through all that come out of hospital went back to work after i could and then they pulled me in one day and they're like um we're signing off your apprenticeship you finish your apprenticeship early and we're letting you go Right, and so they're just like, yeah, that's you done. So you have signed, like, and then I called the the HR manager. We wouldn't come down and do it himself. So he came down, and so I was friends with the, Jesus, the boss. Some soft people in the world, isn't there? And like, then, so yeah. I knew we had it out from from the get go because like he wouldn't let me come back. And then we're well, backwards and forwards with everything, like with me coming back. I was like, I'll sign whatever waiver you want, like whatever. I'll come back. I just want to work. Like I want to get me apprenticeship done and whatnot. And then. I was speaking to my trainer because we had like an in-house trainer and I was like, just give me all the stuff I can do while I'm off so I can just hammer out my TAFE stuff as quick as I can. Got it all done, which was a downfall in the end because then they're like, okay, well, you're done now, see ya. And then the company was getting sold as well. So it was just an easy um, an easy kick out the door. A couple of guys got made redundant as well at the same time, but 
I was just the easy target. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, um, so yeah, now I'm still recovering from an ACL. Got a newborn. Now I've got no job, and Jamie's just had a baby, so she's not working. So yeah, yeah, like yeah, you go to a, a shit spot. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's what I was saying before. Like yeah, it's, I've been down, not uh, not to the point where I've like. I've been super, super depressed, but enough to where I don't want to go out. I don't want to talk to anyone. I was still going to the gym and stuff, but like I stacked on heaps of weight. I was like probably 100 kilos when it happened. I got to like nearly 130 kilos, just eating shit food, hating, yeah. on, hating on myself. And like, it's all that, it's all those like, there's the destructive mechanisms mm, that come with mm, depress- yeah. depression and then there's sure. the, you know, that, that was the difference. Mate, I didn't even realize mm. I dealt with depression mm. until... Like I think it was 2016, mm. and like you know, at that stage, I'm already you know, well into my adulthood, mm. and like so, this is like I'm what 36 at mm. that stage yeah. or something, mm. 35, and um, it's only when you once you know what it is that you can actually start like thinking of healthier ways to that's cope. What, yeah, with that's it. what I said. To, I said to Jamie, I was like, I, like obviously I've never been diagnosed with anything, but I said, but looking back. I would have had to have been in a in a in a bad place, and obviously, if that's diagnosed as depression, then that's what it is. But like, I didn't ever never seen anyone about it. You just gotta pull your socks up and yeah, that's, and and deal but with there's it. There's so much more that yeah. you can actually do, mm. and like, and as you said, that a whole idea. The worst things you can kind of do is that withdrawing mm. thing, and like, yeah. you just stay away from everyone, mm. and you kind of start dwelling in mm. a shitty and dark you don't, place, and like, you don't notice it until it's until you're at the other end, and then like. Looking back and talking to Jamie, she's like, "Well, yeah, like you, like you're argumentative and like you snappy at everyone, and you just you don't want to deal with anyone, you don't want to go out, like, and yeah, you don't realize you're in in the hole until you're out of the hole, and it's just a, it's lucky that obviously you see people don't come out of it, yeah, and how hard it is to to stay in there, and I suppose it's just the and that's probably why I like mentally challenging things so much now is because I know what it's like to be down there, and I know what it's like to like crawl yourself back up." And, and deal with it yeah and the kicker is is that we was talking about it earlier mm. it's like you've got a bunch of mates who you know mm. are there for you but you just you, don't but you just don't do it no and it's it's sometimes you know just actually opening up and saying look mm. just come and catch up mm. come and it doesn't yeah. even have to like i'll be honest the, mm. if i'm in a shit spot mm. the, the last thing i want to do is talk about being in a shit yeah, spot it's yeah. like let's go and yeah. talk let's go and do anything, yeah, anything else. else yeah but it's it pulls you out of mm. the but you get to the point where like you feel like any conversation you bring up is going to bring you back into talking about the dark spot so you don't want to go talk to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like a, it's a vicious cycle. And it is, like, and yeah. it's why we've just got to, like like I said, breaking that stigma, mm. friend. That's why I was saying to you, like I, um, I want, like I want to have my own podcast and obviously that's the main thing I want to talk about is like, is talking about all that kind of stuff and getting people on and talking about like similar stuff like this, just talking about whatever and, and obviously you bring out a lot more stuff when you're talking to, to people for a long period of time so yeah that's right that whole long form mm. kind of mm. conversation and it's not like you, and that's the thing sometimes like if you're not in a situation where you're in with like jiu jitsu where you can sit down for three hours a night and then you're rolling with them and you're talking to them and you're sharing that bond like you like you, you would know like there's a difference between me talking to you now like we share a heaps bigger bond than we would if we just had a normal podcast without doing jiu jitsu and having that connection um yeah like you you, you build you build a special relationship with people when you're strangling them every week. Absolutely. Because mm. there's a... Being in a... in Like, I was actually having a conversation mm. um, around women in jiu-jitsu. Mm. And like, how she... We were talking about um, a couple of our training partners mm. that um, come and she's like, what is it? She, she asked a couple of questions mm. based around... Um, is it harder for women to kind of mm. train, especially if they're mm. training with men? And I was mm. like, yeah, probably. Mm. But the thing is, as soon as you're at a point where you do trust someone and you've yeah. got that like and it's yeah. but it's and i was saying it goes the same with yeah, like blokes, with yeah. blokes. Mm. like if you're mate you've got someone who can literally break your arm mm. and then and they don't mm. and like not only do they not mm. but they give you a chance to yeah. stop and yeah. go again and yeah. start again and it's like there's that you've got that trust and that mm. there's something it's i look i it's kind of like going to battle with someone mm. you know yeah, what i mean sure. like yeah. and it's it's that kind of thing i mm. You always don't want to be flipping about that because when you're yeah. talking about legitimately going to battle with <laughs> yeah. someone, that's yeah, yeah, a yeah. different thing. Sure. But just to put yourself in that physical exhaustion yeah. with other people yeah. and builds to char- do it so it, it builds character and builds relationship. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Mm. So, no. Yeah, I think that's what the 
th that's probably what's dragged me so much to to jiu jitsu and training hard and like the running back when i was doing it and like the gym and all that kind of stuff is is dragging yourself into that mentally challenging spot um which is good like it and um yeah i wouldn't you, know, you wouldn't be the person you are today without going through all the things you've gone through so yeah so yeah that was it that was the acl story so once i thought i did it again i was like jesus christ here we go and um yeah and then i went so that was and then i didn't play footy again for another five years after i taught my acl yeah and then just because i was just so worried about doing it again yeah yeah and going through it like it, it took me like one of my best mates blake and he's like oh, i can't play footy this year can't play footy this year and then like i was just like making up excuses and like nah and like I, I don't have time and blah, blah, like as you do, like just every excuse you can think of. And then looking back now, like that was just me not coping with it and not being able to overcome. Like the biggest thing was me overcoming. Like I went back and played touch football and that was when I did it. I did it playing touch football in training, but like I still associated rugby league with my ACL. So I kind of got over the touch football part and then it was still that hurdle to get, that mental hurdle to get into football it was still there and it took me ages and I was like, so like by the time I came back, I'm so glad I did. Um, just getting getting past that point. And then, yeah, I came back and played. So I tore, which looking back now, I think I did my meniscus then because I thought I tore my hamstring fibers at the bottom of my knee. But the same pain I had was when I had my meniscus. So I think I tore my meniscus in the preseason, missed eight weeks of the preseason straight into the season, played probably seven or eight games, then got caught up in a tackle and tore, completely tore one ligament off my ankle and then had a grade two in the other ligament. So the physio came in and she's like, all right, tell me when it hurts. And she's like, got my foot and she's turning it and turning it and turning it. I'm like, no, nah, it doesn't hurt. She's like, that's not a good thing. Oh. So then like, the, <laughs> You're like yeah. I'm doing well yeah, in this. Yeah, this is great. Doing great. Yeah, it doesn't like, hurt at all. She's like, no, nah, that's, that's not a good that's thing. Bad pro yeah. That's a problem. <laughs> so she's like, just, just turning my ankle underneath. And she's like, yeah, you've torn that ligament completely. So I missed nine weeks of the season doing that. Then to finish that season, that was all good. And then, yeah, pre-season this. Played one trial game. I was pretty fit. Like, I actually had a half decent crack in preseason. I was going good. And then back into jiu jitsu, and I was, I was, I was pretty good. And then, um, yeah, pre COVID hit. Then we had the break, and then no training in between. Come back in, first session back. I absolutely flogged myself in fitness. Last session, last training run for the night, doing ball work, and I you know, kicked a ball and I charged the ball down. And then I got up high enough to charge it down and the ball hit me in the head. So it made me turn a bit more. And then that whole turning just put all my center weight off and I landed all my weight on my leg and just crunched. And then as soon as I did it, I was like, I've effing did my ACL again. And I was like, blowing. I rang Jamie. I'm like, I've done my ACL again. I rang my dad. I'm like, done my ACL again. Then I go get a scan. I've done the ACL again. And then luckily, my the surgeon, I rang the same surgeon that I seen with my other knee. And she had an opening like two days later to get in to see her and luckily I did because she's like no you haven't torn your ACL it's yeah, all okay. good and then I was like alright positive let's go but then like dealing with that I was like this time I was like it is what it is if I've yeah. got to get surgery I've got to get surgery it's there's nothing you can do about it yeah, but after going through what it. you did the last time and oh it was like, stressful like I was stressing her out about it like, I was like I just I don't Jamie's like I don't want you to go back down that same path and sometimes though the experience will help you the next oh, time yeah for like, sure well it almost certainly will yeah, like you yeah. If you can have that conversation, mm. and if you can be open enough to have that conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what that's the biggest thing I've learnt after losing Tory is like you just got to talk about everything. Yeah, absolutely. As much as like, and no, and at the end of the day, no one thinks less of you. Like everyone, yeah. like it, it, there's no, there's no, oh, you're weak for talking or like whatever. Like it's people respect you more for opening up about it and and talking about it. And yeah, going through it all, that was probably easier to deal with this time. And I was just like, yeah, sweet, it is what it is. I'll deal with it. And I'm going all right. I was, like, I was still adamant that it was my ACL when I first did it. And then when it wasn't, I was like, yeah, happy days. And then, yeah, so then I had surgery that day and hopefully I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably it. It's probably most of my injuries. I think that's about it. I've had a, had a bit of a dicky shoulder here and there, but yeah, that's, like that's it's well, all niggly stuff. It's all the niggles are there that's forever. The that was the, ma that's the major injuries I've gone through. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, mate, that's mm. uh, that sounds that's, that's that's a battle. Like, but to come through all that and come mm. through that, and like, mate, you now got 
this this future ahead of you. Mm. You've got like two young kids. Mm. Um, how old are they? I know one's obviously just been born. Charlotte Char- turned seven in um in January. Okay, that's a, little, a solid gap in yeah. between them. Yeah, we, we wanted to purposely leave it a little bit so they were um she could help out more. You know what? I'd, I'd rather not deal with a screaming little toddler that's throwing tantrums. Well, you've got while a, baby, a yeah. new one, so. Yeah, right. Yeah. So um, you, the, your kids, like, what's mm. the, like, would you encourage them into the physical? I mean, you guys are both. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Jamie both. Yeah, I, um, I'm still trying to convince Jamie to come to Jiu Jitsu. She came like once or twice, but um, there wasn't as much girls training then as there is now. Hopefully now that um, we've got a few more girls coming through the door, she, um, she pops that, her head in. What we need is like, we need, you know, the girls to bring a friend to train with. Yeah. Because then you know, you kind of, Mm. doubling each mm. time and mm. like well yeah she um injuries we got family full of injuries so she tore a, a we thought she tore a hamstring but she ended up fracturing a femur playing footy so she was just running one day and then like took off and went to step just hit the deck went and got a skin showed up nothing and like okay that's weird then went and seen a specialist then they done an mri and like you've got a soft spot in your bone and it's fractured so then she had to do all these tests and everything and then so that was a that was a rough ride with her as well and i think having me going through all that stuff it was good for me to be her support say so it's gonna be all right you're gonna come back and you're gonna play footy again like it's it's not the end of the world it sucks i know but you'll get there in the end so um yeah definitely charlotte already plays rugby so like it's only touch at the moment but goes to the tackle next year and then um, she's super super keen for that. So she's way too competitive. She, so it's um, already already keen to do tackle rugby. It's, yeah, uh, mate. Yeah. You know jujitsu is the next step up. Oh, she already like already teach us a few things here and there, and she um yeah she's gonna be a handful when she's older. It's good. That's mm. what you want to hear, yeah. though. Yeah. Hopefully, we get a um a high level world champion black belt out of her. <laughs> yeah, that's right, mate. Um, I gotta I gotta admit the name the name uh Phoenix Gilmore mm. sounds like a world champion, it doesn't does, it? Mate, it that's does. A, that's good. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, well, he's he's already a he was uh, three and a bit weeks premier, and he was still nine pound one. So he's a he's another big rig coming through the gym. Far out. The track, so. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's awesome. Mm. Yeah, no, mate, mate, that's um, that's awesome. I think that's mm. basically well, that'll probably do us for today. Mm. I reckon Sounds that's good. um, yeah, mate. I ever want to come back on and tell a bit more of your yeah, story sure. always, always, yeah. always welcome yeah. thanks might mate. have to do a part two yeah oh, mm. love it I love all that yeah. stuff mate there's yeah. always there's plenty of stories and for sure yeah there's plenty more to tell absolutely mm. alright thanks very much no worries alright cheers till next time Bye.